Hello everyone, Amy R here with Prairie Paper and Ink with not one, not two, but five cards using Simon Says Stamps July card kit, the Be Yourself card kit that I did an unboxing video when it was revealed like three or four days ago, something like that. So as usual, I couldn't decide on like one image to use or one idea. So I was like, you know what? Since they're bees and everything's very similar, I could probably do several cards kind of in a similar vein and, you know, similar color combos, etc. And since there's pattern paper in the kit, everything's kind of like done, which is obviously the whole point. So I pulled out Bristol Smooth cardstock because I decided that I would use my Arteza real brush pens to do a little bit of really simple watercoloring. And I really like how these work on Bristol Smooth. So I stamped all the bees from the set onto just a scrap of Bristol Smooth cardstock with Versafine Claire Nocturne ink. Uh, Versafine Onyx Black would be the same if you've been watching any of my recent videos. Um, I mentioned it. They're very similar, if not the same formula. I don't know for sure, but they work the same. So if you have VersaFine Onyx Black, works just great. No problems with that. You don't need to clear emboss it like I am here. I do this because I am horrible about smearing this ink, no matter what I do. It just saves me the grief. Plus then I can go quicker with watercoloring and whatnot when I clear heat emboss because it gives it that little raised edge. So I don't have to worry so much about areas bleeding into each other, especially with something like this where you're using like yellows and then blacks, etc. because those just, they just want to smear and mess up it seems. So um, I kept all my color really simple after I had clear heat embossed everything. I listed the colors usually, I forget. When I'm using things like this that aren't Copic markers, I generally don't pay attention. I'm just like grabbing colors at random. But this time I did pay attention. So I wrote the colors on the screen here that I used. I only used two shades for each color. So for the yellows, I had a lighter yellow and a darker yellow. And I would apply both at the same time. I would just start with the lighter, add a bit of the darker. And then I'm just taking my little water brush and pulling that color out. It automatically gives it, you know, blends them and it gives it that bit of shading. Really simple, really easy. So I did all the yellows first. And then for the little black stripes, I'm using uh, ash black, it's called, which is a really, really dark gray. And then adding a bit of noir, AKA black. And same thing, just adding a little bit of the lighter, adding then the darkest, and then pulling those colors out with my water brush. And because I'm doing like all these images once, but it's the same process, it's the exact same um, thought process as when I'm like mass producing. I do everything at the same time. So I did all the yellows at once, do all the black at once, etc. So it just moves the process along. So you can do, if you're doing something like this, multiple images at once do doesn't take very long at all. So for their wings, I wanted to add a little bit of color to them. So I used ice blue, which is a very, very, very pale like gray blue. And then a tiny little bit of spearmint blue just to, you know, give it that aqua. And it also kind of pulls out that aqua color that's in the pattern papers I'm going to use. So I added that. And then for the reds, I'm using just red. And then I added a bit of wine red just for that little extra something. And then all of these I fussy cut because I don't have coordinating dies. Um, the kit just came out all, with everything. If there is enough demand, Simon will release wafer dies. But if that happens, those will be coming out later anyway. So don't have wafer dies. So I just did very simple fussy cutting. I will usually avoid this or I won't do like multiples. <laughs> but because these are fairly simple images to cut out, I just went ahead, you know, kind of zoned out. You know, you let the mind wander and trimmed all these out with my little cutter bee scissors, which just happened to coordinate. <laughs> so trimmed all of the images out. And then after I had the Im images out, that's when I kind of started mentally planning like what I was gonna make and realized that I could get several cards, you know, if I kept them a little more simple. So I just die cut more Bristol Smooth cardstock using um, Simon's wonky rectangle dies. So I have um, a couple of the smaller ones and then a couple larger ones. And then with all of them, I'm just doing various like stamping, etc. These like honeycomb images in the set, I am stamping with clear embossing ink and then embossing them with white embossing powder. You could technically do clear. It's just a slightly different look since I am going to obviously be watercoloring like over these, but it's just personal preference. I usually though like the white because I think it stands out just, just a, a little bit more. 
So with this first one, I watercolored it with the markers and I just did the exact same two yellows that I used in the beginning. And with this one, I kept it messy. I just literally scribbled these colors on and then just, you know, use my water brush, to just pull it out, like pulled it out past the lines and just kind of let it do its own sort of a thing. So I went back and forth a couple times to add a bit more color, ended up adding a fair bit of water and then ended up warping this piece quite a bit with the amount of water. I would recommend like taping this down if you were doing something similar when you, when you end up using a lot of water, if you're not, if it's not taped down, it warps and plus the heat. So it did warp, but when I glue it, I'm going to fix that. So um, I did all of these elements kind of at the same time. So I did, you know, all that die cutting for the rectangles. I did it all at the same time. And then all of these panels, I'm just one after another stamping them and embossing them depending on what I'm doing. So with this one, I'm stamping the images and the sentiment with that same VersaFine Claire Nocturne ink this time. And then I'm going to clear heat emboss these. And again, if you don't wanna do the clear heat embossing, you totally don't need to. You either just need to heat set this ink or let it dry. It does take longer to dry because it's a pigment ink. And I just do the clear heat embossing to keep me from smearing it because I just, I just do. <laughs> <laughs> it's a combination of a lack of patience, a lack of time, and just me being clumsy always. I'll always think it's dry and then, you know, I touch it and I smear it. So learned that lesson way too many times. So now it's just habit for me. If I'm stamping this sort of an ink onto, especially onto Bristol Smooth, clear heat emboss it and then we're good to go. And then I just don't have to worry about it anymore. So with these open letters, which I kind of love, I am using, again, that same yellow combo that I used in the beginning, applying the lighter yellow, adding a bit of the darker yellow, pulling it out with my water brush, and then it's good to go. And then this one, because there's that little, that little bee that with the little heart trail, which I think is the cutest thing ever, I'm just gonna use those same yellows and just quickly color him in with those yellows and my water brush. And then once he's colored in, I'm gonna add the tiniest little bit of that, um, aqua sort of color. Which one was that? That was the spearmint blue, they call it. So colored all of that. And then a whole bunch of the sentiments. I also, um, white heat emboss on a black cardstock. I just did that off camera because it's same old, same old that I show in almost every single video. So for this one, the trail stamped with a VersaFine Claire and Nocturne ink and then clear heat embossed it. And then with this little, um, panel here that I'm going to add the just because sentiment, um, I'm also going to do the first fine Claire because I want that definition with the black for the sentiment. But then I'm going to actually add the the smallest of the little honeycomb images in the set. And those I'm going to emboss with the white embossing powder. So I have, in the end, I ended up discovering that I had the one little bee with his little glasses was kind of almost left over. So I decided to do, I'm going to do a little square card with him. So I just cut down a piece of square like cut down a piece of Bristol smooth cardstock into a square. It was, I think it was like three and a half or three and a quarter inches, something. Cut that down to square and then white heat embossed the honeycomb image on that. And then the honeycomb images on the little just because. And with these two, I didn't do any messy watercoloring, but I used those same two yellow um, real brush Arteza pens and just did the exact same thing. Lighter color, add the darker color, pull it out with my water brush. And then just with these ones with the honeycombs, I just decided to color, just color them in and not do the messy, you know, I totally could. And then as I, <laughs> again, those that know me and watch my videos regularly, once these were done, I was like, oh, I should have added splatter to all of these. Like I would almost go back, but I don't want to get, you know, it would actually be more work to try and add splatter without ruining like little bees and everything. But splatter would look really cute with these, a little bit of black splatter maybe a little yellow aqua anyway anywho okay enough about splatter so that piece that warped i adhered it to some sunshine cardstock and then just put acrylic blocks over top of it just to hold it down and that helped kind of flatten it back out and then for all my cards i'm using the bees knees pattern paper that comes in the kit i went through everything and kind of chose a pe paper for each card and then trimmed it down accordingly accordingly with my paper trimmer so I adhered all of the pattern papers to their card bases with Simon's Craft Tacky Glue. And then all of the main images, I am gonna pop up with Simon's Big Mama Foam Tape because it gives it that little extra bit of dimension without making the cards like super bulky. 
And I also use that foam tape to pop all the bees onto the cards, the sentiments, etc. And then a couple of these sentiments, um, I just trimmed with my scissors on, you know, cut the notch down the center and then meet, meet each corner with the end of that notch. And then I get a little like flag end on that. And then I'm going to pop that up with the foam tape. And I repeat this process for all these cards. Again, did all this off camera because I'm just doing the exact same thing like over and over again. Because now it's assembly time. So I just assemble one card after another so that everything is done at the same time. My glue's out, etc. Makes the whole process go a lot smoother. It's so a little heart side here into place just with dabs of that craft tacky glue. And then for the insides of all the cards, I stamped um, the honey, the largest honeycomb image with uh, mustard seed distress oxide ink. And then I was stamping the like some of the sentiments or some of the bees or the trail, etc. with that Versafine Claire Nocturne ink onto the inside of each card just to give it all, give them all that little extra something, something. So I stamped that onto the inside of the card. And then, yeah, once I got everything adhered, same thing, finished off all the insides with either the honeycomb image or whatever it was I decided to add to the inside, stamp the B, stamp the sentiment if I want it. And then as a final bit of embellishment, since I didn't do splatter, <laughs> I'm going to add some Nouveau drops to all these cards just to give it that little extra something, something. So I pulled out three from my stash that went with these colors. So I have um, Night Sky, which is a like black glittery Nouveau drop. And again, applied it to all the cards. Being very careful, I, always, when I'm filming straight down like this, it does look like my hand is resting on the desk, but I'm literally like bouncing my hand above the cards so that I'm not smearing. But I'll do a card, set it aside, go on to the next one, just so that I'm not, yeah, leaning over and smearing them. So I did all the cards with the one color and then I'm going in with my second color which is Calming Aqua and applying that to all of these cards. And then once that's applied to all of them, I'm going on to my third and final color which was English Mustard. And once I've got all of these uh, crystal drops applied, I'm gonna tap all of these cards on, just on like a closed ink pad. You can tap them on your desk surface, whatever. And it just helps to kind of smooth them out if you really want them to flatten out a lot to look more like enamel dots, you really give them a good thwack. But I just tap them to smooth them out a little bit and then set all of these aside to dry. I think Nouveau, like Tonic recommends like at 24 hours roughly till they're completely dry. So once they were all dry, all these cards are good to go. As always, I will have links below the video to my blog post. I'll have a supply list with links to everything used, etc. You can check that out below if you are interested. Thank you all so much for watching, for subscribing, for thumbs upping and commenting. I really appreciate it. And here at the end, I'll have some other videos for you to check out if you haven't seen them. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you all very soon in the next video. Bye.